you are good to go. Good evening, and welcome to this meeting of the Deep Creek Watershed Board of Zoning Appeals. This meeting is now called to order. This time I ask everyone to turn their cellular phones off. I'm Acting Chairman Bill Ingram. This evening we have a quorum of members to my left, Bob Hoffman, Michael Beard, Steve Nagy. We are appointed by the Garrett County Commissioners and we serve at their pleasure. The purpose of this board is to provide a competent interpretation and full equitable application of the Deep Creek Watershed Zoning Ordinance. If everyone's had an opportunity to read through the minutes and findings of our last meeting, I'll ask uh, for a motion to approve as written. I move to approve as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to the public portion of this here meeting. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding. All board decisions are based upon the provisions outlined in the, or the zoning ordinance. The board respectfully requests that all who attend to intend to testify tonight be familiar with the ordinance and limit your testimony to only information relevant to those proceedings as outlined in the ordinance. Any person intending to testify tonight will be sworn in. For the benefit of those in attendance watching online, we will request that you step up to the microphone and speak clearly. We have two types of hearings this evening. We have a special exception, uh, which is a permitted use with conditions, um, although we do have a little bit of a twist on that one. This evening we also have a uh, variance hearing. Variances is a quote from the ordinance itself are to be sparingly awarded. Uh, this one uh, will kind of push us a little bit uh, as it is an after the fact request. Uh, and we're interested to hear what you've got to say about that. Uh, we did have a third hearing. Variance 830 has withdrawn from the hearing. Uh, and presently right now as we sit, special exception 499 is not in attendance. So we'll move forward with the only other hearing that we have in place right now, and that'll be uh, variance 831. Uh, as an explanation of the way things will go this evening, guys, it doesn't look like we'll have a whole lot of testimony going on. Um, we'll have the application read into the record. Correspondence received by the zoning office, either by written or electronic means, will be read into the record. Testimony and exhibits will be submitted by the applicant and representative, followed by testimony of other parties in favor of the application. Testimony and exhibits of other parties opposed to the application will be submitted. At the conclusion of the opposition testimony, the applicant will be given the opportunity to rebut. At the end of that rebuttal, testimony portion of the proceedings will be complete. No further testimony will be accepted and the board will enter into deliberation. The board has 10 days to render its decision if needed, but every effort will be made to come to a decision this evening. Decis decisions by this board can appeal, be appealed to the Circuit Court of Garrett County for a period of 30 days from the date of the decision. And that about covers everything I've got to say. Anyone have anything else to add? No, sir. Mr. Mitz, if you'll read the first. Okay. Uh, the, the first and only case um, so far is VRA 31, an application submitted by Mike Cumulato of Deep Creek Custom Homes, LLC, for the homeowner Christopher Cazaza for a variance to allow a covered porch to within 15 feet of the rear property line. Uh, this is a town residential zoning, requires a 20 foot rear yard setback, so a five yard variance, uh, or five foot variance, um, pardon me. Uh, the property is located at 35 Glendale Woods Road, Oakland, Maryland, tax map 58, parcel 693, grid 17, lot one, and is zoned town residential. And I believe we have Mike Cumulato and Robert Stark of Thrasher Group here to present the case to you. Great. Any correspondence from? Um, yes, we have a um, 
from the Department of Public Utilities. Uh, no problem with the location of the um, house in, in regards to the grinder pump, uh, which is could possibly be a problem. Uh, we also have a, give me one second. We have a note from the Planning uh, Commission uh, pushing the um, variance down to the board that they um, didn't have any problems with it um, from their aspect. Uh, from the health department, uh, no issues with this variance uh, as it is on public water and sewer. And that's it. Who's going to be presenting first? I do first. Okay. Great. All right. <laughs> All right. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in the testimony that you're about to give to the Creek Lake Zoning and Appeals Board? And state your name and address for the record, please. Robert Stark, my home address. Work address is fine. Okay, 3000 Payer Center, Open Maryland. All right, Robert. So uh, we were all out at the site today and uh, took a look at things. Um, give us your case. Okay. Uh, as you stated earlier, this is a, an after the fact. Uh, and so the reason that it's an after the fact is uh, a miscommunication between the builder and myself. Um, however, that's not the reason for us. That's not our hardship that we're uh, pleading. Um, but however, that complicates things, and I understand that makes it look uh, like that. So uh, the biggest thing, the two biggest things are the lot layout, the shape of the lot, um, how it's uh, just the, how it's narrow in between the two roads, uh, Photography, um, just how the lot layout is, and then also uh, there was uh, rock formation there um, through the lot, so more of a rock ledge. Uh, however, uh, so at the beginning, the, the intent and desire was for the, uh, the house to be 15.6 feet from the front property line, uh, as shown on the uh, one of the exhibits there that you guys have. I'm not sure if it's the uh, date of November. Uh, and so it was, the desired intent was for the house to be closer to uh, Glendale Woods Road. Uh, however, uh, in excavating, they came across that rock formation and had to move down the hill. Um, and the only plausible place was on the eastern side of that lot, and so they pushed it down the hill. Uh, everything looked like we could still get it in. Uh, however, that's where the miscommunication of the porch not being visible on the, on the uh, the site plan, uh, he thought it was included in the house. I was unaware of it, miscommunication. So we thought we were within the, the, the realm of what was legal, uh, and we were trying to do that. However, uh, had we known and both understood about the porch, we wouldn't be here after the fact. We would have been here several months ago pleading for a variance because that is the only place that the house could really be built within the setbacks on the eastern side down from the rock that they encountered. So that is the, the hardship that we are pleading and we know that it is an after the fact and so that's why we're, we're asking for mercy and leniency. Uh, but uh, but there was a hardship mm -hmm. and that, that is it. It's just complicated with the miscommunication. Robert, uh, j just to interrupt you a second. So um, is it standard, and I ask this unknowingly, standard for a set of plans to be pr presented to planning and zoning for a location of a home and then come upon whatever incidents up within the property that becomes a problem that we have to, that it has to be moved without communication back with the zoning and appeals or uh, zoning board. We typically directly uh, correspond with the builder, whoever's contracting with us. So if there is a uh, movement of the house, which there is oftentimes mm -hmm. because of rock or they don't. They want to twist it because they like the view better in different places. We we change it, restake it, uh, and get that back. And uh, typically, we're not the ones that are uh, submitting and in communication with with Bruce. Uh, 
Gotcha. Gotcha. And the plans that you were working on, if I understood that, um, did not show the porch. Yeah, mine, yeah, they didn't. The, the plans, the building plans, showed a porch uh, on them. We, that was not addressed in ours. Um, we were under the impression it was a 26 by 32 uh, cabin, uh, and then there was a porch on a different side that showed up in uh, later site plans that showed as a porch, called out as a porch, just a miscommunication on the porch that was <coughs> the width of the house. We thought it was integrated into the house. We were, I hope it was an oversight on our part as to why it wasn't shown there. It wasn't included in the, the dimensions of the house. Okay, I'm sorry to have interrupted your, you, you were flowing really well there and I kind of threw you off. Now, uh, the, the other thing that uh, I'll, I'll say about this is I sent uh, letters, which I can, I can give you copies of them. We sent certified letters to all of the people around there to see if it impacted their view or their use or, um, of the property, their enjoyment of the property. Uh, we have received no responses back. Uh, and in the letter it said uh, no responses. We're taking that as no objection, but please, if you have no objection, still send it in. Yeah. But either way, we didn't. We have the receipts and, and, and all of those things here. Each individual letter and who was sent to. That's all the questions I had, guys. Anyone else have any questions? I oh, have yeah. Robert. Can I go? Yeah, please go ahead. Looking at the site plan, this uh, southwest corner is 20 feet 9 inches from the setback or from the property line. So you subtract 15, you have 4 feet, whatever, 3 inches. Are you saying that you moved the building to the north and that's why the porch is sticking over? Yes, the original one was 15 foot, 15.6. Uh, six but that feet. still doesn't give you 5 that five feet that you're over. If you move the house south to where it's just touching the setback line, you're still over on the north side. I'm not sure if I understand what you're saying there. The, the very first one shows that we're, we're almost touching the front setback. Uh -huh. Then it was shifted, uh, it was shifted north and also it was shifted a little bit to the west to incorporate the side for the second site plan shows it shifted to the south 24.4 feet without the porch, the 10 foot porch. Then it was shifted once again with the addition of a porch on the east side. Okay. Uh, and there we were 24.9 feet. And then the uh, as built, we are uh, to be basically 25 feet, very close to the 24.9 of the last, the previous site plan for the quarter of the house and then that 10 foot porch is what is protruding 10 10.1 foot porch okay protruding. that's that's the part and that was what was not shown in the in the previous uh, and so in that as built also there was a, a, an addition that's shown in the as built that wasn't incorporated in the the previous site plans either that's why the house looks different but that was a side addition to that 26 by 32 just to, in case that was confusing with the house looks is that is that this Robert right here? Yes, that's no. that's the side. That's yeah, that's the side of this. Yeah, yeah that's the side. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. So, so, what I'm hearing is, not only did you not communicate with the county, but you didn't communicate with the builder, or if you communicated with the builder, you miscommunicated somehow. Yeah, we definitely had a miscommunication in, in the porch. That was an oversight on both of our parts. I feel I didn't know it was supposed to be there. You didn't see that it wasn't on there. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah, we definitely admit miscommunication for the handling in, in, in that. Uh, so this, this as-built drawing, you know, there, there had to be something that was submitted to the county that doesn't look like this. Is that correct at the beginning? Yeah, the yeah the one from November because the, would have been the one that was porchless. Bruce would have had on record, I believe. Is that say that one more time? Is the one from November the one that you have on record for the site plan 
permit? In the ver from the beginning? Yes. Uh, give me one second. The only thing in my package is January 6th as built and then a bigger picture of that same drawing. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. have that November one. Yes, November was the original. That's what the zoning permit. Where the home is on the south end, touching the setback. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Up against that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And there's no porches. There are no porches uh, uh, in this. In this. And the reason for moving the house from that drawing was because of rock that was underground. You just didn't see at the time. Yeah. Is the are the measurements on that November drawing thirty two by twenty six? Yes. Okay, so that was without the porch. Uh, that measurement. Yeah. And yeah, that that house that's depicted is 20, 26 by 32 on November 3rd, 2020, January 18th, uh, March 31st. That was where the, the side porch was added. And then the January 6th as built, there's the addition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. Step up. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give in this case be the truth? Yes. State your name and address for the record. Please. Michael Carmelo, 585 Zedar Miller Road, Oklahoma, Maryland. Um, these are the original plans that were submitted, and they show clearly the covered porch up front. And yes, we see them like we did move it forward because of the there's a rock ledge all along that development, and we forward had being towards Glendale. Yes. Yeah. And we had it staked out, restaked, and then I had the footers dug and penned again. So I'm not trying to throw Thrasher under the bus, obviously, but it just it got overlooked the covered porch. And I, yeah, I should have caught it, obviously, and I apologize, and I'm asking for forgiveness. I've built over 150 homes here in Garrett County. I've never asked for a variance, ever. And Bruce had told me to address the items and the uh, package that you guys have. Um, the variance requested does not impact any public interest, views, etc. Um, the neighbors does not impact the porch in question 4.9 feet over in the corner does not impact any neighbors views I've built this home 40 some times including in the back of it at Yellowstone Villages it's the same exact home over and over and over again um, it's not late front we're not trying to gain any late frontage view or moving forward to get closer to the lakefront or increase the view simply 
we hit a rock ledge and we tried to move it forward. And I thought after we had it restaked out that we were good to go. Mm -hmm. And Mike, if I can interject on that too, because uh, as we were walking the property today, I walked up to the top where the parking is now, where you originally been up a little bit yeah. and over, and there was actually a better view up there looking out of the way. I know, we, we didn't <laughs> want to go for it because as you saw, the land sloped off and it created even more of a hardship for me as far as excavating goes sure. and, and what have you. So we, we wanted to stay up towards the road, but mm -hmm. like Robert said, you know, the, the property has two road front setbacks. Right. Front Glendale and Glendale Woods. Glendale Woods, yeah. So it was not behooving us to move forward towards Glendale Road. I wanted to stay up towards Glendale Woods Road. But like I said, you know, the, the way everything worked out, it was just, and it wasn't like a rock that we could just I didn't see original hammer original. real quick and get out. Yep. I mean, it was literally, no, there's there was a ledge of rock there. all the way through yeah. there. And it was, it was huge. And I asked the homeowner, I said, if we can move forward, are you okay with it? So I don't want to. It's going to create extra foundation work and everything else. Mm -hmm. But we, we ended up doing so. And again, I apologize. I'm asking for forgiveness on this. Again, I've never, ever, ever, ever asked for a variance from you guys. I just confirmed with Mr. Metz that this was the, yeah. the plans that were submitted originally. Yeah. So the porch has always been on there. The porch to the side was added, and we were going to address it at the time of UNO and mm -hmm. what have you, but Robert had confirmed that it was in the area, and we just, between the two of us, I didn't realize he didn't include the porch, and I didn't, I don't know, I did. Anyone else have any questions? I guess mine. It, 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 it's, it's you know it's how it was handled. You know you were misinformation between the two of you there and all. But the problem is you're coming in after the fact that wasn't caught before. And it, like if we grant this, it's like opening up a road for anybody else to go ahead. Let's build what we want, and then we'll come back to you and ask for variance after the fact. And that's where my issue comes in. Understood. To be honest with you. But I mean, it's it's not like it's an easy. Fix. I don't think this was intentional. Oh, God, I don't no think the guy did anything. I just. But it's an it integral part of the house, as yeah. far as it's all one truss all the way through. Yeah. It's tongue groove. It's got log work. Everything else out there. You you, you saw it. Yep, yeah, we did. And I good. was I would say, not speaking for anyone else on the board, um, certainly we've had variances that have come before this board. Um, looking for five foot relief. And we would have heard that probably with a different ear yeah. before the fact, but um, that's all water under the bridge right now. But just that's just my take on it right now. And if I could further, uh, uh, it's gonna create a significant economic hardship on me. I'll be honest with you, I, I took a whipping on the house because of the pandemic, overages and everything else. I didn't have an escalation calls in it. I'm not telling you this to give me mercy. I'm, I'm just telling you, I, I don't have the money to, to fix it, if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to fix it other than rip the whole thing off. Yeah. And I don't even know how I would do that because, like I said, it's all integral with the, the house. So. How many times have you said you built this house, man? Well, Yellowstone Same Village is I've got 32 in there. Yeah. So 36 just in the area. With just variations of it here and there. Yeah, it's pretty much all the same now. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, all right. You, you bet. Anyone wish to speak in support? Anyone wish to speak in opposition? We'll close this part of the public hearing then. We're going to hear the next case. We're going to keep moving or discuss this one. We're going to discuss that one. Okay. Yeah, great. All right, folks. Um, we're going to discuss this, and and you'll be able to listen to some of it, but uh, we can't take any more input from this point.
see any ill intent. I don't see that there was any gain in uh, in the miscommunication or the, or the realignment of, the, of it on the property. It, just, it doesn't seem like there's much communication between it, and the engineer builder and the county. You know, yeah. The county was just sort of left out, of, left out of the loop there. Yeah. And as you look at the lot in particular, um, I don't see any grievance that it, that it thrust upon any other property on it. Yeah. Uh, which is the, the original reason why I made the point about, you know, had we heard this going into it, that would have been the light that I was looking at. Are, are, yeah. are we encroaching on somebody else's enjoyment or possible enjoyment now or in the future? And, and certainly full, if full consideration to Steve's point of that, you know, that it could open Pandora's box for us. We've got something to hide, as I mentioned. Uh, we got something to hang a hat on that, you know, there are, it states in the ordinance clearly that the president can't be set by a, a previous finding that everything is measured on its own ballot. Well, as I stated earlier, you know, what my reason was for anything in the future is going to be back, but at the same time, it's not affecting anybody anywhere, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. on it. The view of it, um, I just don't like. You know, it's an after-the-fact miscommunication problem here. But at the same time, you know, I see what Mike says about it. It's going to be a major job. Yeah. Do anything. You just you know, make a deck instead of a porch, take the roof off. It's going to be a major job. Yeah. It's just, and uh, you know, we're infecting the whole motor. Mike and the gentleman over here is a surveyor. I don't think it was done intentional. I, I think that we all had the. the yeah, I, just think it was, I hate to say it, an honest mistake, but that's just exactly what it was on here. And, and given given the testimony that's in place, and I, I don't know if you noticed when we were there today, I did. I walked up to the original spot would have been, and yeah. you could clearly see the shoreline on the other side of the lake. I was like, well, yeah, this would have been the place to be. I think if I can if I can kind of put everything together in one piece, the hardship at the point had they had they known they were going to be encroaching across that line, the hardship would have been with the slope and and, and the rock and the and the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, so as we sit right now, we're past that yeah. hardship. Um, they found a, they found a work around the hardship itself, but it created us being here today. Discussion, gentlemen. Okay. Here, a motion. I move to approve the variance. Someone seconded. You know why? 
Thank you all a lot. Thank you all second. Because I, I don't want to burden my life with this responsibility. I just hope it doesn't come back and get us someday. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, John. Back. I really appreciate it. I apologize. I'll be back. <laughs> Stay out of here, man. Give us your phone number. You'll be on speed <laughs> dial going forward here because it's going to come back. Yeah. <laughs> you do, do you need to come in and listen to us stuff. Yeah. And, and just for an FYI, in the future, anytime you move from your site plan, you've got to come talk to us first because we can help to avoid that. So, hey, Mr. Campbell, uh, you want your picture back here? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to have to, for one thing, the, the property has to, we have to update the permit for yes. the addition. Um, and yeah, what, what I once said things. to him was that you need to, anytime you move the building or, or any of the stormwater management on that site plan, you need to come talk to us before you move forward because we have to address yes. And we, we would have found that when you did it. That's all. Thank you. Uh-huh. I do not like approving this one. I really don't. That is BR831, right? Correct. Yes. And Ms. Darling's owner is here? Yes. No? So. Question B, can we write maybe? Pardon? Oh, question B, can we write maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's one of our choices. That's what we're liking to be. Oh. Yeah. I don't even have my glasses on again. Do you need No, I borrowed them last time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I see your mom walk. I gotta get a refill. These pens just feel so good in your hand. Nice. Which one? These? Yeah. Yeah, I've got three. This one's they gave to me when I retired from the military. But I've got one of those fat boys. Oh, yeah. lot, and then another just the same size only it's black and the pet boy's black. Nice. But they are very comfortable to use. The uh, second case we have tonight is special exception 499 an application submitted by Bellea LLC for a special exception permit to allow live outdoor entertainment at a tavern the pond run barn kitchen the property is located at 485 boy scout road oakland maryland the parcel can be found on tax map 66 parcel 68 grid 9 and is zoned like residential too and I believe we have Ms. Darlene Steuer to present the case for us. And any communications? We do. Give me one second. We have a letter that I sent to you all uh, from Mr. Ken Farley in opposition uh, for one. Yes. Has everyone had the opportunity to read that? Yes. yes. Excellent. I will let you know I'm here for that case. Very good, sir. Thank you. This, too, was uh, presented to the um, Planning Commission for uh, comment, and um, everyone, uh, there was um, uh, basically no one had any issues with the with this application. Um, we have a letter from the Department of Public Utilities. Uh, they do not serve that property and no opposition. We have a letter from the Health Department uh, stating 
Um, our office has no objection as long as the facility does not increase seating or expand food operations outside. And that's it from, from them. And that's it. I assume you'll be presenting the case. Yes. You step up to the microphone, please. I'll swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm you about the testimony you are about to give in this case to be the truth? Yes. Thank you. Your name and address for the record, please. Darlene Sawyer, 577 Boy Scout Road, Oakland, Maryland. All right, Darlene. So you're looking for an outdoor entertainment permit? Um, yes, we have um, currently picnic tables outside and the plan was be was to be make that a kind of gardeny outdoor area maybe eventually a uh, patio type place um, and and we haven't done anything with this yet at all because we just we've only been open a month and a half so it's we're, we've been very busy and haven't done any construction outside um, so we thought it might be nice to have like small groups. I mean, I'm not talking any big rock bands or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, maybe just a couple of acoustic guitars. Um, I love bluegrass. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe a bluegrass group or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and where would you situate the band? Uh, we'll call, we'll call it a band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, um, and we haven't really decided that yet. Mm -hmm. um, we own the field beside the bar. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been we thought about it because there's parking issues and all that too mm -hmm. um we do have that little patio on the end that we could potentially put somebody on but um we're really not to that point yet mm -hmm. all right. um i will say this speaking for myself that 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 would those kind of details are going to play an intricate part in, in how i view um, what we're looking at but i do have some other questions that that uh, you may be able to get on record as well okay. um you mentioned your, your desire it would be for one or two piece band uh what type of hours of operation for that there are comar uh, restrictions within the state mm -hmm. that go above and beyond what the ordinance states that um, are need to be in compliance with so that's why I asked that question um, our intention in opening the bar was not to have a late night venue that gets wild and woolly <laughs> <laughs> and currently we close at 10 o'clock and I think that's fine uh -huh. um, we seem to be able to serve our people people they're happy they come eat they have a drink or two and they leave um, so just something to, for them to listen to and enjoy when they're there. Mm -hmm. um, my thought is probably there in front of the windows or something so that people inside could see them. Um, mm -hmm. But right now we don't have a patio area. So um, I would like to have something a little more smooth than gravel. The gravel, yeah. Yeah, for that in the, in the future. Um, now, just, just from my sense of where we're talking about, because I, I saw the picnic tables, I'm having a hard time recalling where they're, is that back where your vehicle was parked today? No, not back that far, that would be okay. parking. Okay. Um, right in the front where we put the windows in the front. Yes, the yes, yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm, now, I'm I, can, now I can picture that. possibly there, mm -hmm. um, okay. so the people that, that were inside could enjoy it too, I and mean, we could open the window, and um, it won't be anything real loud or anything like that. Again, it's, I'm um, thinking acoustic guitars and maybe some bluegrass. And I am familiar with, with Comar, um, not particularly the decibel. The decimal readings can be, uh, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I would. We own the house there um, mm -hmm. back behind. So really we don't have any close neighbors. We have the field there, so there's mm -hmm. nothing in the field. Um, and like I said, we own the house. Um, and Mr. Farley, I think you own the barn, right? Excuse Is that your property? Me, are you speaking to me? I'm not Mr. Farley. Oh, I thought you were. No, I'm not. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, there's a barn there um, that's between um, our barn and the next house, so. Okay, great. Yeah, um, that was just what we had in mind, and we wanted to um, see if that was an option as we plan going forward for the patio and whatnot. Is mm -hmm. it, you know, what do we need to plan to do? Understood. Um, and the hours that you would have it would just fall within your operational hours wherever you, wherever you could fit, fit right. that in. Right. Um, the patio that you're discussing, um, do you envision that being just a flat concrete patio or are you looking at enclosing it in any way with a roof or? Um, I wouldn't mind having a roof over it just to 
keep people out of the rain. Mm -hmm. um, and I get, and I know I'm not enclosed. Yeah, enclosed. right. Yeah, just a, um, just an overhang. Um, we talked about a pergola before with maybe those see through. I don't want to darken it up at all. Right. Yeah. Um, you you so. went through a lot of effort to get some light inside. Yeah. Um, do you have an idea of the square footage that you'd be looking to add on out there with the patio? <laughs> I do not. Okay. Um, it would be the whole front, probably, <laughs> almost in front of the building. Okay. Um, and I do not bring that drama with me. All right. Well, we're all familiar with the property, so if that helps. That's all, I, all the questions I have, gentlemen. I don't have any. No, I, you asked the questions that I had, too. That was actually one of the statements that the health department stated, that they couldn't increase seating outdoors. So, uh, you, that would, you'll, you'd need to be careful on that. So that it has to stay within whatever the health department's approved for the structure itself? I'm assuming, yes. Um, I'm assuming that they have a septic field that is capable of handling X oh, amount of X people. Amount of people. Mm -hmm. Is so my feeling. That, that would make sense. If I don't know if that impacts. Now, if that were to be expanded, maybe the health department would change their view on that. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But as you sit today, right now, you couldn't add any more occupancy to the property as it sits. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, with no other questions, uh, sir, you've already stated that you're in opposition, so I'll ask you to step forward. Darlene, okay, after, after, his, after his completion, I'll have a chance to rebut. And I have a signed copy here. To Can I swear you in first, sir? Yes, yeah, sure. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give before the, this board to be the truth? Yes. Okay. And your name and address for the record, please. Oh, okay. My name is Edward R. Foley. I live at 93 Penn Point Road, uh, Oakland, Maryland. Okay, thank you, Mr. Foley. This is, I do have a couple copies. That's fine. Okay. okay, well, I'll start. I have some comments outside of this letter, but I will write this because it kind of mirrors my thoughts. Sure. Uh, of course, the date today, July 21st, 2022. I'm not a public speaker, and there's no water fountain outside, <laughs> so I'm pretty dried out. <laughs> And it's addressed to Mr. Bruce Swift, Chairman of Deep Creek Lake Watershed Board of Zoning Appeals Court at the Courthouse, 2003 South Fort Street, Oakland, Maryland, 21550. And with regard to zoning hearing docket SE 499. <coughs> Chairman Swift and members of the Board of Zoning Appeals, I am providing the following comments on the special exemption zoning request. And I don't know if all these words are right because you guys are the expert on the damage. We just go with the flow of you, so don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm providing the following comments on the special exempt in zoning request within the Deep Creek Lake Watershed Docket SE 499, which I believe will have a significant negative impact on the waters and nearby residential area of Deep Creek Lake. The newly reopened Pond Run Tavern, located 45 Fiscal Road, has applied for a zoning exception to allow for outdoor entertainment at their business. I believe the approval of this zoning variance request will greatly expand the patronage and traffic to this venue within the designated Deep Creek Lake Watershed R2 residential zone where this business is located. <coughs> Sorry, I'm nervous. My main concern is that located within 10 to 15 feet of Pond Run Tavern, is Pine Run Creek, a major year-round tributary to Deep Creek Lake, less than one half mile away. To my knowledge, there is no public sewer 
or water infrastructure in this rural location. And the tavern relies on an antiquated septic system and well water to support its business. Given the likelihood of increased patronage at Pine Run Tavern, featuring outdoor entertainment, I'm concerned the additional stress on the old septic system will quickly be overwhelmed. I believe there is a great potential that human waste will enter Pond Run Creek and run directly into the Pinpoint Cove and then into the rest of the Creek Lake proper. <clears throat> a secondary concern is the footprint of Pond Run Tavern business has already been expanded by the owners into the adjacent agricultural field beside the building. This expansion includes additional parking area for tavern employees and customers, as well as picnic tables, a fire pit, and lawn games for the apparent use of tavern patrons. <clears throat> All of these nascent steps towards expanding the tavern business footprint will negatively impact nearby property owners and residents. I believe approval of the subject zoning variance request for outdoor entertainment will only exacerbate I always stumble on that word. I'm a good writer, but I'm not a good at pronunciation. <laughs> the negative impact within the late residential R2 zoned area. Thank you for allowing me to provide my comments on this matter. Edward R. Pauling, 93 Pembroke Road. Now, I live about 200 feet away from the business. I've leased this property for probably four years. I come and go. It's easy for me. I have family gatherings there. I don't live there year round, but I live definitely in here in the summer. Winter, I grew up here, had to move away from employment, but I, my family's still around here, so I rent that place year round. Um, I've been there five years. I know the lay of the land. I'm a big walker. I walk that whole peninsula, every square foot of it, really. That property is a natural amphitheater valley. Any music, outdoor or otherwise, inside that valley booms throughout the valley. If I turn my stereo too loud, all my neighbors can hear it. There's hills that surround it. So I, this outdoor music uh, idea, of course, there's no details about it. What size bands are you, are you talking about? A band like, a local band like Remedy with 10 members? Or are you talking about a guy on a bar stool strumming a guitar, playing a banjo? I don't know. It's outdoor entertainment. The real concern I have, the tavern itself, which was open before, well, I was, I've lived there when it was the old owner that owned it, and didn't hear much noise from it, but they kept it restricted within that acre and a half footprint where the house and the bar is. Now, with the Stoyer family, family farm with 40 acres, adjacent to it that they're already using for parking and fire pits, et cetera, what I stated. I mean, this could turn into a big nightmare for anybody that lives within any distance. The letter that you guys sent out and that's in public notice went to very specific property owners that touched the store your properties or was directly across the street. There's all sorts of neighbors <laughs> in the neighborhood. In fact, there's a development going on that you guys probably had to approve a lot of zoning for right at the top of the hill. That so is what the requirement is, sir, from the Maryland Open Ax Meetings Pardon? Act. The o Maryland Open Meetings Act requires that we send out certified letter letters to the adjacent neighbors okay. and that it be uh, advertised in the local paper for right. two weeks in advance of the hearing. Okay. But because I'm a uh, 
uh, leaser, I did not get the letter. My landlord got the letter. And I saw the notice in the newspaper. So, yes. Right up the hill is a development being developed now. There's five new houses being developed in there that you guys probably approve. It's called Paradise Run. Those people are going to be affected by this music because it amplifies drug value. So I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to the bar being open. In fact, I'm hoping that they do the right thing and you know have a nice business. I came out of my driveway tonight to come to this meeting. There's 50 cars there. Good. The only problem is they're planning on putting their music venue, their patio, in the parking area that has traditionally been Pond Run's parking because the previous owners did not own the agricultural fields around that's right beside of it. The Sawyer family owns it. Now, they're expanding into their fields. Hey, if you want to park cars in your field, I guess, you know, what's the next step? Graveling, paving? Are we having another honey bar there? It's a very small commercial postage stamp in a country environment now that really could explode. And you guys are making the decision <coughs> on some um, entertainment that you don't know what level the entertainment is. So far, the bikers haven't come. The old bar had some bikers. You know, Saturday afternoon, there'll be 20 bikers up there. Of course, you heard them come in, then you heard them leave. <laughs> Pretty much a kept inside the bar. But I don't know what's going to go on with outdoor music. Maybe it's a good crowd, maybe it's a bad crowd. A lot of intentions turn into unintentions in the bar business. Because I used to work in the bar business, and I understand what can happen. My intentions are to have this kind of place. But the customers help decide on what kind of place you have. It's not just the owner decides, the customers decide. So I, I can agree with that to a, a great extent, but I think that you might be underselling the impact that you can have on the clientele that you bring there by actions that you take, uh, prices that you charge, uh, bands, yeah, that, bands that you bring in. I think all plays part of the clientele that you're going to play to. Mm -hmm. But since I grew up here, I also remember when the honey bar was a tiki hutch, okay? There's a little tiki bar down back. Go down to the honey bar on a Saturday afternoon right now. Look at the parking lot across. Now this is in a zone business area. Yep, that's down this traditionally, that point on the lake is all, since the lake's been built, it's been a gathering spot. The Rainbow Inn, Glen Haven, Pizza Hut, you know, all this stuff. I know the history. Now it's a gold mine for the owners. And that's good, you know. But look where they're located. They're located in a business section. The surrounding Arrowhead developments, condos, they came after. <laughs> they were built after the bar was in operation. So anyway, I have my say, you have my letter. Yes. And you guys get to make the decisions. So that's it. I, I appreciate Do you have any questions for me? Uh, sir, I, I do. Uh, Bob Hoffman here. Um, you sent, maybe not this one, but something very no, similar to this. No, I, I disagree. No, let me, let me ask my question, please. Award. Let me just ask yes. my question. You sent something very similar to this to the POA president, Bob yes, Sutton, did. did you not? Yes, okay. I did. I, I thought so because I sit on the POA board and I saw something like that, yes, which I shared that. with Mr. Metz, and he in turn shared it with appropriate people in the health department. Sh your because of your concerns fall within that venue. I just wanted you to know mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and I saw some of the responses because the POA president turned me, you know, sent me some of your guys's comments, and I had a little problem with that, just because in the sense of. Okay, I used to work for the federal government, so I kind of know how it works in the government. But a lot of it, what I was reading in between the lines was, 
It's not my responsibility. It's somebody else's responsibility. And I have a little problem with that because you're a government agency and you you know the, the roles. I don't. I don't know the health department takes care of this or you guys take care of that. I don't know the handoffs of who's in charge. Just a little bit aside, I'm a big walker. I walk Ten Point Road, I walk Ten, Ten Point Hike Road, I don't know how familiar you are with that area. This past spring, there was this stench coming out of Pond Run straight into the lake under Ten Point Heights Road. I mean, it, it was like a strong chemical odor. I don't know what it was, but it was upstream from someplace. And I'm like, oh man, this is terrible. Well, guess what? Three days later, I go down there, it's still there. Hmm. So I called the health department. I said, hey, it's, it smells terrible here. What? Well, it's not us. It must be DNR. So I called over to the state park. Oh, well, it's not us. It's somebody else. And I'm like, finally, I just said, hey, they don't care. Yeah. They should have been. I, I, and I that's had, a bad thing. I, I've been a part of a similar reaction with, and the MDE was, would be the, the appropriate person. To yeah, in charge MDE? Of it. Maryland Department of Environment. Okay, I, I just missed dial. I don't know who to yeah. contact. Well, I, and I'm not speaking in, a, in an official yeah, capacity. Yeah, that's an aside. Because it's just this. It's kind of like the responsibility the a novice like me that doesn't really know who to contact. Mm -hmm. Even if I give it a good, honest try, <laughs> I'm running. And like I said, I worked in government for years and I had customers and I did it myself. You know, maybe I even caused a few roads roadblocks in my career. Mm -hmm. And I regret that. But still, you've got my presentation, you've got yeah. my letter, and so. Okay, Mr. Pauline, I'm gonna give Darlene the opportunity to rebut any okay. of your comments or questions. Uh, she may have some okay. comments for you, but unless you don't have anything else to add, Darlene. No, I, I, I'm, um, I'm done. Well, I just, I guess I'm gonna Please do speak to the board, though. Not yes, I'm other. sorry, I did not I mean, mean to direct that. I just that. wanna reiterate that we're not gonna have any big bands, that type of thing, and I'm well aware that we're only allowed to have so many people. Um, and we park in the, park in the field because I wanna make it convenient for people that they don't need to you know, park close proximity. It's easy for them to park in there. Mm -hmm. um, and we've not been over capacity. Um, and I don't even know if we're gonna have bands in the future. Um, I just wanna be proactive and plan you know, if we do put it in a patio area there where the picnic tables are, and I mean the ones in front of the building. Yes, ma'am. Not over in the field. Mm -hmm. um, that we make it appropriate for what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to disturb the neighborhood either, um, but I, I don't think the sound is going to amplify in there. There's too many trees and that type of thing. Um, I mean, I couldn't could barely hear it at my house, and I live right about far from the previous owners that had big bands. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I could hear it if I was out on my back deck, but it wasn't disturbing and it wasn't that loud. So and I know that I, I know that you um, updated your restrooms inside the bar. Yes. Were, were there any requirements as far as uh, the county for you to make any improvements to? the septic or well that um, Mr. Poling referred to? Um, there weren't any requirements, but when we did the work, we put in low capacity toilets so that whenever they flush, there's not a huge, you know, how the old ones had a big tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's low, the low water level and they work fine. Smart. I mean, it only, you only have to do one flush. You don't have to do 10 flushes to get it to work properly. <laughs> Um, it, we did that in the bar, and we also put in a water filter system over um, the come for the water that comes out of the well that goes into mm -hmm. the bar. Very good. I have no other questions. Great. Okay, we're going to have our discussions and have a vote, and we'll let you know. All right, gentlemen. I don't know what the capacity is that's been decided, but it's been decided. Yes. Because <laughs> of what Bruce said. You know, yeah. Bruce has said that there's, a, you know, he's, the health department has decided on X number of people, and that's what's allowed. 
So regardless of whether they have the fire marshal and health department yeah. sets that number up there, and it's not going to increase unless they do some modifications to the system. Sure. That's not there. Like so you know, I don't I don't know what her capacity level is right now, but you know, she puts an outside venue in, it cannot change. Right. It can't change her capacity. Right. right. And that's yeah. not within our. That's not, no. That's not, no. That's beyond. I'll our tell show. you where I am. I read the letter from Mr. Farley. And I, I found it very persuasive until I, I really started thinking about what he was saying. And I went to the ordinance, and he was saying that uh, under the commercial uh, use section of 157.24, he was saying that uh, use number 19 is non-conforming, which is the indoor activities. And he may be right, although I don't think that that's the exact uh, section. And then I thought, well, it doesn't matter anyway what's going on inside because we're looking at an exemption for <coughs> outdoor activities under Section 17. Uh, whether the bar is grandfathered in or whether it's non-conforming is irrelevant to the exemption for outdoor activities. Uh, if, if she was applying for something in this adjacent field, you know, balloon rides for kids or whatnot, it would be the, the same thing. It's irrelevant whether the bar is conforming or not conforming or whether it's grandfathered. We're not adding one exemption onto a non-conforming use. We're looking at conforming use cannot be expanded. Cannot be are we expanding you, upon it or are we looking no, at this? No, you're not. I'm just saying. saying that she can't, she can't expand go. her occupancy levels. Right. right. Or go into that field. So that's, that's because that's the non-conformity is for the footprint of Pawn Run as it has been historically used. That, that part I'm not sure of. But I was looking at the letter from Mr. Farley, who I wish had been here to testify, and I thought it was very well written and very persuasive, but I think it, it misses the point of this individual's special exemption for outdoor use. And that's where I am just focused on this outdoor use. Uh, I listened to Mr. Poling and uh, I mean, First of all, it, it sounds harsh, but he doesn't have a property interest. Uh, he rents. Those landlords probably should have been here. To, Mr. Farley does have a property no, Mr. interest. Mr. Pauling. Mr. Pauling, yeah, uh, and, and, and his concerns were more for uh, environmental, which I certainly uh, support that, but that's not, again, within our jurisdiction. That's all I have to say. I, I have, uh, as I stated in the beginning, um, would like to have more of a concrete idea of what we're looking at, not to use a pun <laughs> for, for uh, what we're looking at, but I think, Darlene, you've, you've painted a fair enough picture that I get an idea of what it is that you're looking for um, as far as the location and mm -hmm. the venue that you're looking to promote. In the past, you know, we, we, we've gone without site plans and, and things, uh, but uh, I, I, it's useful to have them. This is a special exception, and this is approved, and approved. in that area. Correct. Number one, it's approved. And all we're going to do is we can approve it, and we can give her Conditions. whatever limitations we want. Mm -hmm. you know, the closing time, what, what's going on out there. And she has a whole lot more bridges to cross. Oh, yeah. Just because we approve it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Remember, we're just the first step in this program. You're absolutely right, Steve. One area, and you know, this is an allowed exception. It is a permitted use. What it needs to come to us is we can put, you know, you got to start it out at 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock. We'll put, you know, pick a number on there. Her capacity is not going to change. I don't know if her capacity is 100 people. It's still 100 people. Mm -hmm. And her restrictions on the type of liquor license, whether you can no, even have not on that. Or you know, it's so the, the point is, you know, um, the sewage and the water is issues for the health department, not us. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to approve that if she wants to increase her capacity. It's already been approved for what she has now. So if she wants to put that outside and take 40 people from inside and throw them outside, she can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as she doesn't go over whatever that number is they issued her on that. But again, if she wants to increase, then she's back across a lot more bridges to get it accepted. Right. above what we are. It's, it's not our uh, part of what we approve to do. 
our problem is to prove yes, if she wants indoor entertainment, is it allowed? The answer is yes, that is allowed. Do we want to put restrictions on it? That's what we do. Yep. Period. That sounded a whole lot like a motion. <laughs> I'll let motion make it. Go for it. <laughs> I make a motion to approve. I'm going to make a motion to approve. I'll yeah. second it. Yeah. And, and I, I just like to say, I, I have no, I, I think the restrictions as they would exist, the, the biggest one is noise level mm -hmm. when you're talking about outside entertainment. And that exists in uh, in the state. The state exists and, right. the, and the county follows that. So I, I don't I don't see, in, I don't have a, any opinion as to additional restrictions uh, beyond that. I think it's the same restrictions we put on them all. We have a template that's on the computer we can't get to right now. So I apologize. For no, that. that's all right. It's, it's the same for every, you know, we play a player field, it's the same for everybody, you know, whether which one you are or any of the others in the county. Absolutely. You know, right. They all have the same restrictions on there. On there. And I don't see any reason to change anything. No. Yeah. No, probably not in this instance. I don't, as you very well pointed out, it is grandfathered. But it is still an approved yes, use. It's an approved, a special exception. So, with that, we have a motion. We have a second to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And how does one go about appealing this? Can you say through the court system? Yes, yes sir. Mm -hmm. would, yes. I, I can provide you with that information. Yes, I need that information. Darling, you are approved. Uh, we're going to talk about um, any conditions or restrictions that we're going to place upon it. Um, it as Steve has already mentioned, um, it's going to fall pretty much in compliance with what others that have come before us have, have gotten as well. Yes, and then you can talk with, with Bruce also. Um, are, you going to, are you going to be discussing that in front of us? or The conditions? Yes. Yeah, we're going to be sitting right here. You're more than welcome to sit and, and, and listen to it. Now, I will say to you, Mr. Poling, that there are some intricacies to it that we don't have at hand right now because we, we've got, as has been mentioned, a template of things that we have traditionally used as our guidance for it. Unfortunately, IT has got a hold of Bruce's computer where that is homed, so we won't have access to that directly right now but it will be part of our findings. And as I stated earlier, we have 10 days to render the complete decision. And where do I find the written decision and all these restrictions and all that? When the opinion and order... It, like it is now? Sure. When the um, opinion and order is issued, uh, you can request a copy of that with me. I can. Uh, you can request that right now. And I can provide you with that and the appeals information. Yes. Okay. No problem. Do you have an email address? Yes, I do. Let me get that from you, and I'll make sure that you have all that information. It's public, pu public information. Right. Is this published in the newspaper? Yes, I do. Okay. Right. Thank you. No, it, it does not get published in the paper. Um, this has conditions. I, I can get you another one. Yeah. You say the conditions has. You can't have gone too far, too. I'm missing Comar restrictions. So, uh, 
without our little you can, handbook. You I've can been, write seen, it as the standard Garrett uh, uh, County uh, uh, rules pertaining to and restrict, entertainment. Tomar restrictions and observance of mm -hmm. quiet time, as stated. Right. Oh, this is the other gentleman. Yeah, that's case. not. Yeah. Okay. Now, what is this stuff called that you're going to send me? I'm going to send you a copy of the opinion and order. Opinion and order. Yes, sir. And I'll send you the um, information for the uh, court of appeals. Okay. And this opinion and order will be your approval and your restrictions and all that. It will be the Correct. board's approval and and basically okay. the what occurred here this evening. Okay. I'll give you some documentation. This is also on our website. This meeting is being recorded. Good. You can get on our myself. website and hear <laughs> that. like a nervous... Uh, I think you did great. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any old business that needs to be addressed? Um, I do not believe so, no. Okay. Stand adjourned. Make a motion right. to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Thank you all for participating. So, I was at the Pond Run one night here not that long ago with uh, Paul Edwards. We had a little one-on-one -on -one meeting. Mm -hmm. Who shows up with that judge? Oh! He was here with his wife, and I think it was daughter and son-in-law.